The question is uh, the therapeutic value of exercise, is it as good as uh, medication? If you look at those studies, you're talking about people with relatively mild depressions. And so I think most people believe that you know, being active, being with people is therapeutic in and of itself. Is it a result of actual the oxygen and the, you know, uh, all the cardio and all this other stuff? I don't really know. I will go one step further though. We do know that there are some patients who have a, a depression that is driven by inflammation. Uh, and they typically don't respond to uh, uh, Prozac uh, and those kinds of drugs. And so there are immune markers that are up. So if you're going to do exercise, you need to be smart about it. Don't go out there and, and just hammer the pavement and knock yourself out and get all those sore muscles and things like that. Maybe that's why I don't exercise. I don't know. Uh, it makes me depressed. I've got, I've got a, a cytokine-induced depression. I think when we're talking about really the, the more serious clinical depressions that typically run in families uh, and typically you know, interfere with a person's jobs and uh, their performance in school, I, I tend to think that exercise is important, but it's not going to be the fix. You know, therapy and or medication is going to be necessary in those situations. One of the problems with those studies is that I think that in psychiatry over the last 30 years, they've done a rotten job of further defining uh, the subtypes of, of depression. And so there's a book out that, that is very telling called uh, The Loss of Sadness. And it's written by a couple of social uh, sociologists, and it, it really is one that I have my students and residents, I encourage them to read. Because the, when I was training, you really focused on the context of the person's depression. And that was what, it, what you addressed. If it was reactive, if it was related to bereavement, uh, if it was related to early retirement, you addressed those issues. But whenever we started saying depression is depression is depression, and everybody should get Prozac, which, by the way, was, I think, driven by insurance companies, uh, because, you know, Prozac is a lot less expensive than, you know, a sufficient course of, of psychotherapy. Uh, I think when we got to that point, then I think we started seeing a lot of studies that, that showed the bloom was off the rose with these antidepressants. I still go back to the, the, my experience as a, a resident where we had two drugs, one that would make you sick and the other one would kill you. And those patients, we didn't throw pills at. You know? So you had to really convince me that you had what at the time we described as a uh, biological depression before I would give you something that you could go kill yourself with. Uh, and when we did that, when we selected out for the very severe depressions with a lot of the, the neurovegetative symptoms, we had a very, very, very high rate of response compared to placebo. It's when we started watering down that criteria to play the insurance games, that's my opinion, that uh, um, we started losing the effectiveness. We were just so happy that Prozac didn't kill people that we would throw it at anybody. Yeah. Front of the bar, yes.